She says, yes, she hears me. Okay, so we're ready to go. So um, welcome once again. We're happy to have you here for a lesson today. And um, this is a variety show, so we have a whole host of things that we can discuss. And I'm just going to just pick one off that comes out of my mind now. Let's talk about the laws of bridge. I have been a director, and things have come up. Hey, somebody joined us on the line. Who's there? Uh, Steven here. Hello there. How do you do? I thought I'd try this from Melbourne. Oh, from Melbourne? Oh, no kidding. No, how's the weather in Melbourne today? Well, we're just waiting for the morning. It's the third of April rather than the second. Of April. <laughs> That's right. You're a day ahead of us. You know the future, don't you? I do, yeah. It's <laughs> <good. laughs> not good. Uh, well, we'll pray for you there. I um, Take care. And Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Okay. And you you were the first one joined in. The oh, thank you very much. Right. Okay, we're looking forward to having you here, right. too. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have a question for you, and I hope you have a question for me. Oh, maybe you dropped off. I'm not sure. But at um, any rate, so let's go ahead and continue. So I'm going to just do something off the laws, something that comes up as a director that I see fairly frequently. And um, hmm, let's say that you've made a mistaken bid. Now, there's two types of mistaken bids that can happen. One type of mistaken bid is where, let's say you're using a bidding box where you actually have the bids that come down and you do a mechanical error. You pull the wrong bid out. You meant for one diamond and you pulled out one spade or one heart right next to it. And you, you put it down and um, you see it there. Now you've laid it down so that your bid has been Based, it's touched or nearly touched the table. And so now the ball is in play, you think. So your feeling is that, wow, um, uh, I'm kind of stuck. You know, I've made my bid. Um, it's been touched or nearly touched the table or played in a manner to indicate that it was played. You know, you could take and I hold up my bid like this. And everybody sees it. But normally it's those two ways. So, um, or you make a call. You know, if you're playing, um, let's say, rubber bridge, social bridge, and you say, um, one diamond and you really met one club and it was just um, a mistaken call. You know, you did, it wasn't like you, you have a change of mind. You can't undo that. But if it happens to be where you've made a bid and um, you didn't mean to, a mechanical error or a slip of the tongue, not a slip of the mind, as we say it from bridge director parlance, then you can withdraw that bid up to a certain point. So now it's to your left-hand opponent's turn to bid as we go around the table clockwise. And um, your left-hand opponent has to make a bid, and you go, oh, my goodness, I made the wrong call. Um, if you want, we can call the director. But, um, you know, I just had a slip of the a hand or a, uh, a slip of the tongue. You know, but if you pull the wrong one, you can withdraw it. Your part, Your opponent now has made a bid or not made a bid. And now it's your partner's turn. And now you've discovered it. You know, you, you didn't discover it before, which you could certainly have called. But now it's your partner's turn to bid. You can still make that call to the director. You can still say, you know, I slipped the wrong um, card out there when I made my bid. Or um, I, you know, I, I just a slip of the tongue. I said one diamonds. I was thinking of one club or one heart. Now, if it turns out that... Um, you said you went two diamonds, but you really wanted one diamond. It's like, mm, the director will say, um, really, can you tell me a little bit more? Um, because um, your convention card says two diamonds is weak, uh, and now you're doing one diamond. Or you know what I'm saying is, and I had in a tournament I was playing with um, just recently, and <laughs> I was playing precision with a partner, and for some reason um, I made a two-club bid when I meant a one-club bid. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, it was a slip of the mind because I forgot at that instant. It was, you know, you get long in the day and I, I just made the wrong bid. And um, there would be no reason for me to call the director because it was um, a slip of the mind, and not a slip of the tongue, or it wasn't a mechanical error. Yeah, one club and two clubs are not that next to each other in the bidding box. So that's something you should be aware of is that if you do make two legitimate types of mistaken bids because it wasn't problems with your thinking or your partnership agreements and conventions, 
then you can go ahead as long as your partner has made not made a bid. And it doesn't have to be the first bid. It's not just the opening bid. So if it goes um, one club, um, two clubs, and, um, you know, we're playing um, where two clubs is a very strong hand. They call it the inverted minors. Normally it's one club. Three clubs is strong. But if you're playing two over one, most people say if it's one minor and then two of the minor, that's kind of a weak hand um, with less than seven or eight points and a long suit, obviously, because why wouldn't you be playing a no trump? So, okay, one club, two clubs. And now I come back and I bid, um, let's say, two spades because i don't want to play in no trump because i just really have a lot of my points but i've got a shortage in hearts so i bid two spades um and then i realized that oh um no it's like um, I, I meant to do three spades maybe it was a specialized bid but you know i just kind of pulled the wrong one but um i meant three spades and it wasn't like it was a thinking error then that would be okay. Also, it doesn't have to be on the opening bids, but as long as your partner hasn't bid and you have a legitimate reason, then you can go ahead and say, bring back the torpedoes. <laughs> and the opponents may, they may not be too happy with you. They may not know that law. And so um, I don't have the law in front of me, but um, I know in some of the lessons I have discussed this. So if you go to um, bridge hands, um, into the lessons that we've done in the past, you'll see that if you want to do a search for, I guess, mistaken call, um, but you can look through the index and see some of the lessons are on the bridge laws. And so maybe I'll kind of throw those in in our variety lesson from day to day. Well, okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and do what I think most of you come here for, and that is to take a look at what's going on at the table. It's so, like I said, I had two hands, two good hands that were a continuation from the other day. And um, I don't know, somehow the different hands showed up. So I think I'm just going to take some from a lesson. I don't know what this is going to be. I just kind of picked one to start and let's see what happens. I don't even know who's going to be the dealer here, but I'm going to take a look at the hand for a moment. And we're going to think as how it should be handled. So um, hmm. South hands look kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, let me move the cards over a little bit because I am sometimes a bit of a perfectionist. So let's get this so it looks nice here on the screen. There we go. Okay, that looks good. So, okay, we're going to the south hand as the dealer. And it is a, the shape is a 6, 4, 3, 0. And we love the fact that we have the master suit. And look at the nice um, values in the hand is that um, we've got a great spade suit. I'm working honors in the club suit and I'm connected honors in the heart suit. So it's a, a very good hand and we'll just do a hand evaluation. We've got three points in the spade suit. We've got four points in the heart suit and four, five, six, seven in the club suit. But wait, there's more. Um, this is a good suit in spades. It'll take the third trick before it gets promoted, but, um, Anything beyond four, we count an extra point each. So there's another two. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to give it that value. Five and another 11 is 16. And you say, well, um, 15 is 17. Open one, no trump. No, not with a void. <laughs> yeah, your partner is sure to have diamonds. And if you look at the north hand, let's look at the north hand for a second. Peak. Oh, yeah, somebody had diamonds. It was our partner. So, yeah, you don't want to go ahead and make um, mastermind bids that are not supportive of your partnership. So back to the south hand, it's going to be a one spade bid, of course. I've, I've seen a lot of um, entry level players. Um, in fact, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine, we were playing in, um, a game at a duplicate game and um, she had 15 to 17 and um, the opponents, one of them was a director and a very good player. And, um, you know, was, she was playing in one no trump and then all of a sudden is in my partner she showed out with none in a suit and she looks at um, my friend and says that's a no-no <laughs> well we really shouldn't talk that way that's a matter of etiquette but we don't <laughs> i never forget that that's a no-no so at any rate here yeah we're going to open one space with a um, six four three zero okay over to the west hand and west has a um 
five, four, three, one. We see those quite a bit, don't we? That's not an uncommon hand. Remember the five card majors, or I should say five card in your longest suit. That's the most common that will come up. You know, the five, three, three, two is the most common of those. The five, four, three, ones and the five, four, two, twos. Those are not uncommon at all. And we love it when we do have honors. If we have five in one suit, we're hoping that we've got a couple of primary honors. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. But a lot of the time, you'll have at least one of the primary honors, the ace, the king, and then we got the queen next to it. So, yeah, I think it looks like just right off the bat is we're going to do a little bit of competition after one spade, meaning we have to go to the two level, meaning we need 12 points or more. A good 11, maybe. You better have some good values, though, in that suit. Used to be a lot of people would say, you need to have a six-card suit. No, you don't really have to have a six-card suit. By the way, I guess, am I on this camera? Yes, I'm on this camera. Sorry, I was kind of looking back and forth. But... um so uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got six high card points there, another seven in spades. Um, the king is another three. And um, one distribution for the fifth card in hearts. Yeah, ace, queen. I think we can maybe promote that. Eventually, it should hopefully get another trick. So we've got, s uh, what is it, um, about 15, uh, six, um, 13, 16. 16 points, so we're going to bid two hearts. Boldly. <laughs> no, just in tempo. Okay, to um, the north hand. And we can come around to north. And, um, hmm, well, it's just got some nice values, doesn't it? I'm going to give a second before I make a bid, but I'm kind of curious at what you all think. And um, I can't really see the all the things here. Well, wait a second. I think I do see some popping up. Um, okay. And um, it looks like we're all working now, I think. Okay. Um, as far as the audio. So hopefully you all are getting good audio and um, video and um, looking at the meter here and it does show that I am transmitting audio. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead. So um, that was one spade, two hearts. And what do you think we should do with the north hand? How do you evaluate that? Well, we know we've got six points in the diamond. Um, do you have any outside entries? We got shortness in the uh, opponent's heart suit there. Well, we've got four spades. Our partner bid one spade. So, wow, we've got a lot more than six points. I'm going to give, um, if I had three spades um, in my partner's um, bid suit, I'm going to give a couple. I'm, I may give three points. I'm not going to give one extra for the length and two extra there, but maybe three altogether. So I'm going to say it's about um, nine points. Should I count two more for the extra length? Well, if you think you can get to the hand several times once the trump is pulled, but there's not too many entries in this north hand, is there? So um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a normal two-spade bid. If um, they come in with three hearts, I'm going to go three spades. But right now, I'm not going to go three spades, which could be weak by some players. And I'm not going to bid three hearts, I don't think. Um, that's a little bit bold, saying that I think I, we should be in game. But you're somewhere in between. It's... You know, it's like this um, singleton heart. It's like it's a king doubleton, right? Because the second time it's played, ostensibly that person has the ace. It's like you'll take the next trick. So I see, you know, two to three tricks. Okay, so anyway, let's say it goes two spades. Hmm, over now to the um, east hand. East has a, hmm, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, four, three, zero. Have you heard that before? I have, yes. That was what we said was in the south hand. So oftentimes you see similar shapes. Something to be aware of as you get bidding. But um, do you want to make a call? Huh. Well, you would kind of like to be just this king jack. But boy, you've got four in your partner's heart suit. And they bid spades. you got a void in spades. So yeah, I, I'm going to go th three hearts. Four hearts might be a little bit rich, but um, I think I will do that. I wonder if you would also. So three hearts based upon the fact that you've got a void and an agreed upon suit by the opponents. They did an O-bar. That's O-B-A-R. Opponents bid and raised. So some people play special methods after the opponent's O-bar. But okay, so, oops, excuse me, that was three hearts there after two spades. Insufficient bid, um, so they have to make it corrected and you can't correct it to another suit or else you get big trouble with the directors, but we won't go into that law. 
So, okay, back to South. Um, South, what are you going to do now? You've heard your partner go two spades. You have a um, now a, a fit. And when you have a fit, you can take a look at what your losers are. And we talked about a suit quality of nine autonomously. You don't care about what your partner is. That's the number of good honors and the length of the suit. In this case, we have um, one, two, three, plus six is nine. But I, you know, that queen, jack, ten, it's, but you do have the other values with it. So you might have done it before, but now for sure with the suit fit, we don't worry if it was a suit value of eight or seven or whatever. So, okay, our losers. Well, we have two losers in the spade suit, don't we? We have um, in clubs, one loser. And in hearts, are you an optimist or a pessimist? I ask you. Hmm. Maybe one and a half. <laughs> so um, let's say that you counted as two losers. Well, that's five losers altogether. And five losers, if your partner makes a bid, don't you expect them to have two tricks? I do. Um, so five losers subtract two from partner leaves three losers. 13 minus three sounds like you've got, oops, try that again. 10 winners, 10 winners is a game. It's, um, you get a bonus contract for having your four spade making it. So yeah, I'd say that you should bid um, four spades. I wonder what you did. But four spades, I think would be the call to say, We've got a very good chance for game. Now, I don't know about this heart suit because what? King Jack, am I really thinking I'm only going to lose one trick? Who bid hearts? Ah, you should listen to the bidding. The ecosystem said the hearts are not necessarily likely because this person, you know, they have 12 or more points. Probably not too many more because, you know, the there was bids coming from our partner and bids coming from over there in the east. But um, um, yeah, I'm thinking is that I'm going to go ahead and show all four hands here is that my heart um, finesse is maybe not going to work. But hmm, if they both bid, they obard in the heart suit, then I don't think my partner's got too many because I've got three. Does that make sense? So we have to think about the ecosystem. We can't just look at our cards and we're looking for finesses and think is it who's likely to have the points. And I think we think that the West hand has it to our left hand opponent, but we're still going to make that bid. We may or may not make it, but now we're just, um, we're a little bit more tentative. We're not quite so bold. <laughs> um, and if we had um, pass, I guess that that would, um, our partner would probably then come in with three spades up in the north end. They should still go ahead and keep the auction alive in the pass out seat because they had about two and a half tricks when you consider They've got a single ten and an extra diamond, and they, uh, excuse me, an extra spade, and they've got that um, ace queen. They don't know that the diamonds are behind them. Just an unlucky break. Okay, so we're off to the play of the hand, and I don't know if I have the um, any of the play of the hand, but we can do it if there's nothing there. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, they led an ace from ace king third. Yeah, you don't want to lead your heart in this situation. That's for sure because um, you don't have the king. And if it turns out that your um, righty, me in the south, has the king, which I happen to do, is that you're giving away a trick. And I see that happen all too often when you're playing with people, and it gets like um, a heart bid over here, and then a, um, a heart plus bid over here, and then what my partner must have the king because they supported the suit. No. <laughs> When the opener is to your right, they could have King Doubleton. And don't underlead the ace, or it might have to have King Singleton or something like that. So the um, point I'm making is that um, play a safe lead. And what's the safest lead is play the ace, because you have the ace and the king. And look at the dummy. Do eyes left. You look at the dummy, and the dummy is like, oh, okay, it's a singleton heart. So I've only got one heart trick. But now I can know that because I have visibility. And sometimes in bridge, there's other things we'll talk about, which is called a discovery play. And a plane of the ace is a discovery play because you're getting, in this case, a look at the dummy. But even if you hadn't looked at the dummy, you could play the ace and his partner encourage me or discourage me. So sometimes we do these discoveries play. 
we kind of probe the offenses of the our defenses of the opponents. So okay, so you've won the ace of spades and you look at the dummy and um hmm. So yeah, I guess that what are you thinking? You play the ace of the trump suit. Hmm. Do you want to play um oh let's do it this way. Let's just show two hands. We're gonna show north and west. From north and west perspective. Okay, there you go. So that's what you see. You played the ace. Your partner discarded a five of diamonds. Huh, had no trump. Okay, so what is this split on that suit? We had three. There's four in the dummy. That's seven. There's none in our partner. So looks like it's a six bagger, six long in the other hand. Now our partner's five. Is that encouraging or discouraging? Or Well, they can see the dummy just like we can. So... They're also looking at the dummy before they made their play. So the five, um, well, let's see, we've got the 10, and there's some others beneath it, aren't they? There's the four, three, two. I only have one. I think my partner is likely to have one of those. So I guess it's semi discouraging. Do they have the 10, the jack, or the king? That's the question. So let's see what this play strategy is, because there's one more thing you should be thinking about, and that is, what's the declarer going to do? You're okay to think in the eyes of the declarer, and in the declarer situation, we see that if they have some hearts, they're going to want to rough it. So should we play the king and then a third, so that they only have one roughing opportunity? Hmm. That's a good question. We know that um, they went to four spades, so they should have... Five losers, I guess. You know, if they had four or three losers, they probably would have maybe even opened two clubs. But by the bidding, it looks like there's some shape going on here. And we have a diamond, so we can anticipate shape also. So I hope that you're starting to think about the things that are going through my mind as you're going around the table and thinking about other people's hand and what they're thinking and what their strategies are so far on just one trick. Okay, good. So, okay, at this point in time, um, let's see what they do. I'm not sure what the um, I had in the lesson, whether I had the West hand to do the right thing or the wrong thing. Let's see where they go. They played the king, so their strategy is clearly is like, I think that they're going to be roughing in the south hand, so I'm going to try to cut down on the roughing power, but I'm playing three rounds. And I'm just hoping that they're not going to set up the diamond suit. Because if they've got the king of diamonds and a couple others, uh, my strategy maybe wasn't quite so good after all. So, okay, so there we go. You've cast your spell, and you're going to stick to it. So you got the second. And, oh, your partner, by the way, went five of diamonds and two of diamonds. So it sounds like they like the suit. Great. So, okay, we play the third, and um, now the partner plays a low heart. And so, okay, so um, South, you're in. And you had to go in with the nine. So um, what do you want to do? All right. They play the jack of hearts, kind of um, a sneaky rather than the 10. I kind of like that strategy. Oops, I should show you the card, shouldn't I? So I'm going to put all of them on the table again. And so they played the jack from king, jack, 10. And um, we go up with the queen over from the west perspective. Cool. And you now play a diamond um, to your partner, and uh, you're not going to take it. You're just going to go up with the ace. But um, guess what? Um, it was um, pitched. Huh. It wasn't roughed. It was pitched. Why do you suppose that was? Let's come back to it. Very interesting. Next is like a club, and we play that to the 10, and as expected, the finesse fails. Yeah, if our... Lefty over in West has got um, 12 points. Yeah, uh, finesses are not going to be working too well, probably, are they? Okay, well, um, then the Ace of Hearts drops the Singleton, or now Singleton um, King from King Jack Third, And um, okay, so um, it looks like the tricks are is North-South has, let's go ahead and make a little note there if we look down there, is three, east, west, four, and we got the rest of them. So um, we are making nine tricks, which means down one. 
not so happy. And um, why was that? Well, it was because um, there was a good line of play. It doesn't always work it that way. But the line of play by the West Hand had kind of thought it out. And let's see if you would think it out the same way. So the thinking was is that um, there's a chance that we might get more tricks by not letting them set up a suit. Uh, and that is by roughing on the hearts. Now, there was no guarantee, you know, how these diamonds might break and everything um, once we saw the first. You know, so when playing the ace, uh, good, a discovery play. Your partner played um, a five. And um, so um, I guess couldn't play the jack. That would be kind of giving away way too much behind that ace queen. So that was the best they could do. And if you um, thought about it, it would probably was there were some values there. I don't think there's going to be a lot of diamonds necessarily in the south hand because, you know, they have six spades, it turns out. So, okay. So um, if you played a diamond, that would still be a winning play. Um, it turns out that both the spade and the diamond. So if you had selected the diamond, you would still be fine in this auction. It still would. But, you know, this is double dummy, the deep finesse. It looks at all the different cards and makes this play. Um, but I would say the likelihood that your partner has the king, well, they've got some value somewhere because they bid after um, two spades. They bid. So um, Grace has got a comment coming in. Okay. Um, you are hard for me to understand what you're saying, says Allison. Allison, I'm sorry. Um, why don't you go ahead and put another comment there? And if there is something that you can give the additional information on what is hard to understand, if it's my um, enunciation or amplitude, I may be able to fix that. Um, if it's I'm um, going over the cards too fast, I apologize. I Maybe it's just not the right level. Maybe some of our other lessons will be easier. Um, John is saying, West on lead, so only one heart loser. Good. Okay. And I see some other things, too, about the distribution to go to game. So way to go on that. Um, but um, back to you, Allison, I would just say is in this situation is that when you're bidding and all four players are bidding, everybody's got some points. Everybody should have, uh, well, the, the first two people, the first person to open has a good source of tricks. The person who overcalled the two level should have 12 points or more. So there you've got about 24, 25 points already. So I would guess if the other two people are bidding, um, 24, 25, um, let's say 24. Um, that leaves 16 points, 40 points in the deck. So between the 16, maybe they're both about eight playing points. Maybe they don't have that in high card points. Maybe they have some distribution because as we've spoke about in our last lesson on um, counting high card points and shape, we get points for length in a suit. So at any rate, um, let's say that um, it was instead um, the um, diamond was played. Um, north, you've got a void. Do you think that they have the king over in the west end? Well, I, I think you'd probably go up with the ace. But you should be thinking about how many losers you have. But let's say they go up with the ace, and um, then there's an encouragement over here. You think, well, if you ever get in, again, fine. But um, you don't really have to play that card because you've counted the hand. And if you looked over here in the east hand, you see it's, Six six one zero. So you didn't have to signal at all to your partner there, did you? So okay, it was the diamond up to the ace, uh, whatever play, and south you get a, a pitch. I guess you're gonna pitch a heart. Maybe you make it look like it's a you're running out of hearts. Play the jack rather than the ten. Okay, in north, um, you could do a um, a roughing strategy. I think that's would be awesome. So. Um, You'll go ahead and play uh, a diamond and rough it. And they're going to just um, maybe not even cover. Figure that, oh, maybe there's another one. I, I wouldn't go up with a jack or anything. I just play low. And, um, okay, you're going to rough. Um, and you don't have to rough high because um, they're all the same values. And um, you can rough with the king since you're out too. And then, oh, now we know it's 6610. The declarer now knows this also. 
So you come back with a, um, a spade. You can see this must be the card played now if you want to set it. If you play anything else, you play a club, you're going to go into the jaws of the finesse and south. Or if you play the ace of hearts, then that'll be the last one you get. You won't win the king. So you must play a spade now. So at some point, you can see that you needed to exit with a spade to be able to set the contract. Well, okay, is there any final um, comments on this hand or um, the discussion before we go ahead and sign off? I hope you're enjoying this show. Cover a little bit this time on some of the laws of bridge and a little bit on the thinking part of bridge. But I, I hope that kind of comes across as that I just picked this up hand. <laughs> Next, tomorrow, we're going to get the two hands I wanted, I swear. But every time I tried to show it up, I was getting some other hands. And I was like, no, no, no. So um, I guess just like you, I also sometimes have to be a little bit extemporaneous and say, do the best with the tools you've got. I had no idea what this hand was, but um, yeah, I think it's a fair hand that um, shows a couple points. Okay, well, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day here. And um, tomorrow, I think we're going to keep with the same format. I think I'll be able to do two hands tomorrow. This one, I only got a chance to do one, but um, we did a little segue there on the laws, and I'll have some more laws. I think maybe we'll do some things a little bit more in conventions as well as we go through with these. So that will be helpful. But um, a lot of these are going to be where it's competitive bid. It's nice to where it's just two people are bidding, but oftentimes the way it works out is we have competitive auctions and um, we want it to be where you feel the tools that you get here are things that you can use at the table yourself. So um, thanks for the lesson and being there that I'm hearing and um, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Boy, this week is flying by, isn't it? So we're going to do these Monday through Friday as much as I can for the month of April. So this is going to be fantastic Friday tomorrow, and I look forward to seeing you then. And I'm hoping that this weekend for you with the ultra and premium memberships that I can have another more comprehensive lesson where we have quite a few hands that we cover on a specific lesson. So, uh, Mary, I see you there too. Mary, thanks for coming on today. And uh, my best to the people over in Aussie land. So um, thanks for coming. And as we always say, happy trails to you until we meet again. Grace, you got something else? Sharon. Um, oh, there's Sharon. Spending my mornings with you. Hey, morning time for you. Yeah, I had somebody the other day that wrote me, I think it was actually a little earlier, and is from Madrid and is saying, you know, this is like, boy, seven plus two, you know, seven hours Greenwich mean time, and another two to Madrid time is like nine hours. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm sorry, unless you're up, you know, past midnight. So I think maybe on the weekend, I'm going to try to see if I can get a morning call to kind of just change them from some. So see if I can get stirring um, a little bit earlier and maybe have like a, a 10 a.m. call so we can catch people maybe in, in the evening if they're in Europe. And um, then the people in Aussie land, they can tell us what's happening for our world tomorrow. So thanks again. Happy trails to you. And um, bye for now. Happy trails to you.